Hi guys, it's Gav here from DartsPlanet.tv. Thanks for joining me as always. And in today's video, I'm going to be talking about the UK Open, which was at the weekend just past. Possibly the strangest tournament that I've ever watched, but did go ahead despite the weather um, behind closed doors. It, it, it was it was so strange to see it on TV. But all the decisions and what's happened around it has caused carnage between the fans that were there, Barry Hearn, um, everybody really, it's huge talking points. So in this video, I want to know what you guys think. Now, before we go any further into it, there's nothing we can do about the weather. Storm Emma raged across Britain, as we know, affecting South West in particular, and obviously it cancelled the Premier League in Exeter last week as well. There's nothing we can do about the weather. However, the issue with this one is there was a lot of fans that were already paid and at Minehead in Butlands ready to go and watch it. But the UK Open hosts, obviously again Butlands, um, decided that they were going to close the venue to the fans, but they would keep the tournament going ahead for the TV and behind closed doors. Only players and their family members and the tournament officials were permitted entry into the playing areas. That included the main stage, which they then moved to the Reds Bar. PDC chairman, Mr. Hearn, who nobody wants to upset, had his say on it as well. I will show that tweet very shortly. So, with the show going ahead, there were still 10 players that weren't able to make it. One of the standout ones was Martin Schindler, who did. He managed to get a fight. He had a huge journey to make. Um, he even sent in a clip of him in his taxi to say it's in the UK. I think he had to check in by 4 o'clock on that day to make sure that he could register. And apparently, his taxi journey cost him £400. But the main casualty of this, guys, and the people affected were the fans, with Butlins deciding um, to shut it. Let's have a look at what Barry Hearn had to say on this. This is his tweet here, guys. He read, this is a poor excuse, he tweeted. No one is travelling now, so it wouldn't hurt at all to allow those on site to watch the darts. A stupid decision which does not serve you well. Dear, oh dear, oh dear. That, to me, <laughs> you do not want to upset Barry Hearn. You really don't. But after the announcement, fans on social media had questioned about the PDC's role in this. But the PDC Chief Executive Matthew Porter come out and he implied that the organisation had nothing to do with the decisions. Hearn's comments, as you can see there, back it up. It was not the PDC's call. It was the organisers. Now, like I said, again, please, please, but, you know, bear in mind the health and safety for this. But there's so many things that I want to run through. The health and safety, yes, they've got their hands tied and different things. But if the players, um, family and others that were there could go in, why couldn't the fans that were already on the site have entry into it? How must them fans feel? And for all those that had paid in different things... It was a really, really brave decision for them to do that. And I think that it's possibly going to have <coughs> huge recurrences. I may be wrong. Secondly, the atmosphere for us guys that were watching it on the telly, it was, I was glad it went ahead because, you know, I love the tournament. I love the FA Cup of Darts. I love the way the UK Open works. I love seeing the Riley qualifiers. I think it's absolutely brilliant. So I'm glad it went ahead. But I was sitting there on telly just thinking, it was so weird that the, there weren't all the chant earning and all the huge atmosphere and some of the players, I think, struggled because they didn't get lifted by it because they got in the heads. It's a TV tournament. Some of them, like Paul Nicholson, you know, it would have been a great opportunity for him to play in front of the, the cameras again. John Park, you know, it, so it, it was really, really strange. But let's talk about some of the highlights as it did go ahead. Paul Hogan, the Riley's qualifier, always present, seems to do very well every single year. Played out of his skin. He's a delivery driver. His, his darts is crazy. He hit 100 average. Um, he did go out in the fifth round in a, against Gale in Price in the end, 10-9. But how well does this guy do? Maybe he does well because... 
He's, you know, he doesn't put pressure on himself. He's, he's not, um, you know, playing the tournaments regular. He does it as and when and love his job. Also, it was great to see John Parr. I think that he'd won more games on telly in, in this tournament than he had in about the last 10 years. He had a huge run. He went to the quarterfinals. His draw was against Robert Owen. Again, another player, FA Cup of Darts, who I thought that actually John Park would have the better and go to the semi-final. He actually ended up losing out 10-3 to Robert Owen. Uh, David Paller, another story from the tournament, run all the way to the semi-finals, eventually losing 11-7 to Anderson. Didn't play his best in the semis, but what a run it was, picking up huge amounts of money. Um, that will see him well for the year, hopefully shoot up the rankings. And Robin Owen, as I've just spoke about, who obviously um, beat uh, part in the uh, quarterfinals, finally lost out to Corey Cabby, 11-3 in the semis. Probably didn't do himself justice, but that is what the UK Open is about. It's absolutely awesome to see these players come from nowhere. I'm not saying from nowhere, but like the Riley's qualifiers and Hogan and, and, and oh, it was just awesome. So I'm glad that it did go ahead on that point. But I have uh, three big questions to ask you guys. So please, please leave your comments below. The first one I'm going to ask is, did Butlands make the right decision for the fans that were already there, booked in and paid not to allow them into the playing zones? What do you think? I think it was the wrong decision. They were already there. If others were in there and it was a health and safety issue, they wouldn't have been allowed in. So it was clearly safe for them to do it. So I think that they should have allowed them in. Should the venue be moved next year? We all know that originally at one point it was at the Bolton, at the Reebok Arena and different things. Should it be moved to another venue in case we have similar problems next year? Not saying they won't be prepared for it, but should it be moved? And my last question is, is what happens when you upset Barry Hearn? It's bad news. That might not even be a question too. It won't be, should it be moved? It's, it probably will be moved. I can't imagine that Barry Earn is not going to have his say and input in this to how it was dealt with. Obviously very upset, as was Matthew Porter and a lot of the fans. So guys, please leave your comments below. Let me know your thoughts on this one. As always, I hope you've enjoyed watching this video. If you have, please leave a like. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and check out Darts Planet TV. That's where all my videos are. I've got loads planned. And that's it for this video, guys. I look forward to hearing your comments. Bye.